Hello fellow heroes and welcome back to another Destiny 2 Endgame build showcase. Today's build is around the hunters and for those who enjoy doing content solo or in groups, but still want great benefits to be granted towards yourself. Now, not much has been spoken about Assassin's Cow and its usage for solo players for quite a while, and even though it got highlighted in a new dungeon for solo players, that was kind of it. So I want to showcase my version of the exotic that can be used in both solo or group endgame content and how effective it can be with keeping you alive for a very long time, even without the exotic in name. But you know what else has been useful for endgame content? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications for more stuff like this in the future. It goes a long way for me. Starting with the subclass, we'll be using Blade Barrage as this has now become the highest and strongest DPS super for hunters in game currently and is pretty flexible for a number of hunter builds. To make this build effective at what it does, you'll need to focus on the exotic's main strength, to which it will allow you to become invisible via melee only. Now although the exotic can be used via finishers, its melee will be the main key to making the exotic the best in its field, and justice alone will trigger a number of benefits along the side, such as Radiant and Restoration. So for aspects, we have On Your Marks, where getting a precision kill will grant you and your allies a boost in the handling and reload speed. We then have Knock Him Down, which allows our Blade Barrage to produce more projectiles. For Fragments, we have Ember of Searing, where defeating Scorched Combatants grants us melee energy. Ember of Ashes, which grants us more Scorched Stacks on the target. Ember of Sindering, where Class Ability recharges faster on the Scorched target. Ember of Solace, where Raging and Restoration effects applied to you have increased duration. And Ember of Torches, where powered melee hits make you and your allies radiant. For stats, we have 60 to 70 resilience, 80 in recovery, 50 in discipline, and 60 in strength. Now, although this looks low, please remember that having the useful mod should be enough to supplement the build overall. You also don't need a lot here because of the subclass interaction with the exotic in use. For key mods now, you'll want Bountiful Well for creating two elemental wells, Mini Wellmaker for creating wells with your melee, Font of Wisdom for a plus 15 intellect stat. Powerful Friends for a plus 20 mobility and allows others to become charged with light, and Reaping Wall Maker, where activating your class ability and netting a kill will produce elemental wells. So, by applying everything together, you should be able to activate your exotic for a non stop radiant buff, small health bump, and invis depending on the combatants you take out. This can be used multiple times in short succession, as your midi will get refreshed thanks to the knock em down aspect, and because of how simple this is to do, you have nothing to worry about. Even if you don't net the kill via melee alone, you can refresh this by activating your gambler's dodge or use Scorch target to speed up the recovery phase. It doesn't stop there though, as we can enhance the healing phase of the build even more through the weapons used. Now, depending on what activity you're playing, your weapons will change from time to time, so don't take this list as final. For my primary, I have the Peace of Mind Pulse Rifle with Overflow and Focus Fury. A great weapon to have since this injured perk will grant you additional resilience and damage resistance up to times 3, which can be handy when doing endgame content. Although my custom role isn't fully finished, it's still fairly good against the more tanky rank and file, and can be upgraded at a later date to suit my needs more. Alternatively, the Submission SMG with damage perks or with Demolitionist is another weapon to have in case you need to face overload champs and need something with a faster RPM. For the secondary, I have the Lubre's Ruined Glaive with a movable object and unrelenting. Now, the purpose of the glaive is to give us back 4 health when we need it most, while also giving us a decent level of protection via its guard. As you can see, the unrelenting perk will be giving us health back depending on how many combatants we take out, and then with the incendiary perk, Soul Drinker active, they can also grant us health back depending on how many hits are made. So, combine this with Assassin's Cow effect and the Inquenchable First Armor mod. And in practice, you can recover from critical health in an instant. Even if that's not the case of you getting your whole health back, you're at least getting half your health back just from doing so, and this could be handy in many scenarios as long as you play your cards right. For a heavy, we have the Gallowhorn, since the heavy slot can be freely picked and tuned into what you desire. We don't have any additional damage perks or mods to make the weapon even more stronger than it is now. So all you need to worry about is what type of heavy it needs to be used for the specific content in mind. Alternatively, I do have the Storm Chaser Linear Fusion as of now, which is great for building up damage quickly and in a short time frame, since it's got a new frame type. Definitely worth investing in and getting along the way. For the stats, the vast amount of our stats are minimal at best and should generally stay around these areas if you can achieve that. 
Now, of course, you may have seen many people suggest you go ahead and get 100 in key areas instead, which I do agree. But at the same time, not everyone is going to be able to get good armor with strong stats to achieve such a goal. The best thing to worry about here is mainly your strength, resilience, and recovery, as these here will be key for lasting longer in fights. I have my resilience at 60 to 70, but this can be increased to 100 for that max damage reduction if you want. Of course, what I'm currently at is just fine, since 9 times out of 10 will always be invisible or will be relying on like healing factors to kick in. There is an argument to be made as to when I'm not invisible, such as how much damage I'll be taking and how I'll be able to negate the damage made towards me. Do remember that my glaive can give health back, and on top of that we do have our Cassidy Restoration active. So in the time frame that we have, we should be able to do a good amount of damage before we get taken out, or until a minor combatant is available, and thus we can go invisible as we please. Our strength now is at 60, and this is simply to cover the passive nature of the ability in case things go bad. Although our subclass traits will be giving us energy that we need, it's always wise to have this stat at a decent level so that we can wait our time if need be. Now I do have the Invigoration mod to help this area out, and very handy in some situations. Our mobility now is also kept low as this time round we'll be relying on the Ember Syndrome Fragment and Utility Finisher mod for instantly getting our class ability up faster. Don't worry about needing to get this higher as depending on how many times you plan to use your finisher, this will always be available when you need it most. So for leftovers we have Solar Cypher mod which will allow our solar weapons to create all the power and Rocket Scavenger or Linear Scavenger mod for more reserved ammo and Classy Restoration, where activating your class ability grants you restoration. Now, as we have covered the main topics of the setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For Head, we have Resilience, Unquenchable First, Solar Siphon and Battle for World mod. Arm, we have Minor Strength and Mini Wellmaker mod. Chest, we have Resilience, Kakas of Damna, Armor of the Dying Star and Fondle Wisdom mod. Leg, we have Rocket Scavenger, Invigoration and Powerful Friends mod. Mark, we have Minor Discipline, Utility Finisher, Classy Restoration, and Reaping Wellmaker mod. If you have attempted to do the solo dungeon this season, thanks to the solo 3.0 and the Classy Restoration mod, then this is the build you may have come across with its unique effects or keeping you alive for long. I have watched many speedrun videos of solo players doing the new duality dungeon with all types of setup and gear in mind, and only a small handful of them has ever used the Assassin Cow for completing their runs. Now it's a bit strange to watch considering that the exotic is easy to activate, has great survivability and doesn't ask a lot from the user, and yet not many people tend to use it for a strength alone. This can be potentially linked back to Void 3.0 being just much more better for the use if you were to stay alive for longer. But Solo 3.0 and Assassin's Cow in hand is a great setup designed for self-preservation on a large scale. As you can see, doing a Master Wellspring can allow you to master the content by playing aggressive and then activating your exotic trait to disappear, get health back, and then get back into the thick of things. It can practically bring you back from near death as long as you use your gear accordingly, and this can help with more solo content if you want to have a smooth run without being killed so fast. Using this build in duality for the first boss as an example, I could go invisible as many times as I like and sneak past the general rank and file and then reapply the buff when I need to get the bells or need to get to the other side of the map. It's a very subtle but strong perk that when leading too heavily allows any type of run to be smoother. Of course, Void 3.0 invisibility is and always will be better for the general user if they plan to support teammates that want more damage distance overall. A solo 3.0 has shown that the most simplest exotic can be the most powerful exotic available as long as you commit to it and then build further into its strength. I can see this being picked up and being improved on over time and we still don't know how Arc 3.0 will feel just of yet, so I could see this being taken over. Either way, the build will have your back as a solo player from here on out and if you'd like to do tough content, solo, groups or with friends, then look no further. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up date with Destiny content. If you like that stuff, link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.